stuff has arrived, stuff has arrived, all the things that PP Auto Parts supplied. The damn box is broken, but everything survived. Let's start this engine, the stuff has arrived. It's quarantine, baby, we're all losing our minds. Yes, yes, we are starting that engine finally today. I want to show you a few other things before that though. I know, I know. Here's some other stuff that VP Auto Parts finally has available. Brake calipers. These weren't available shortly before. That's our rear brake line that's coiled up there. That's our coil insulating gasket. That's our expansion tank bottle. And this is the header system 037E with some hardware kits for all the little missing stuff. Uh, it looks good, but let me tell you, if you want headers on these cars, don't waste your time. Just stick with the OEM manifold and we'll get more to that later. Alrighty, unfortunately our brake line has to go at an angle because that line is not long enough and it's, it's a bummer. I don't know if the early cars just had this junction like a little bit closer or something, but it don't fit any right. The brake line being so short, Okay, so it says 1965 plus on this part number, 671841 on BP's catalog, but this part number, 19, up to 1966. Well, that's interesting because this car is a 66, and that other part number is a lot longer line, like the original line that came off of this. I'm not surprised if it ends up being one of those like, oh, you just have to look and see what your car is because Volvo changed it a couple of times mid-year here and there, so. It's not really standard all around the world, so you can't blame them or their catalog. And uh, I don't need to do the wiring for the headlights right now because, see, I brought the bus out. It's ready. It's getting high time for transportation and I gotta figure out which tires I'm keeping and which ones I'm junking. And I am now going through all my wheels and tires. Just the piles of rubber that I've had sitting on the side of the house. Acquired over the last five, six years. Used to be much worse, to be honest, but I'm going through right now and I'm seeing what fits this hubcap. I think it's a 10 inch. 10 and 1 8 inch. And the answer is nothing. Nothing fits this hubcap, so these are all going in the trash. And there's Genevieve sitting outside in the shade because the sun's getting real low, buddy. It's getting real low. It's going down. <laughs> Here's the rear brake line. It's actually quite easy to take it out. Under the frame rail and down and over and around the parking brake. And then would you look at this. As I was removing it from the proportioning valve, it likes to do this with old brake lines. They seize up and then they twist and split. And so that's a broken head also. Really wonderful timing. I was halfway through unrolling and making my bends with my little tool here. It's just such a useful little tool. Thankfully they use copper and copper is very forgiving. Look who's here, keeping me the cumps. I was halfway through unrolling this and I was like, how do they keep track of how long the line is? Do they just count the turns in the spool and go one, two, three, four, five, six? All right, that's about right for the rear line. Let's put our fitting there and then they ship it because I don't think they would unbend it or even take the time to measure around each loop. They just sort of know this is what the loops are. Anyway, my point in bringing all that up is that I'm left with an extra six inches of brake line. Thankfully, there's a lot of room in the back by the prop valve, but what? And these are, I think, bubble flares, or, or, and I think a lot of these cars use bubble flare fittings, and bubble flare is not even something you can find in stores anymore. They've just phased it all out, so. Thank you, VP, for at least going this effort. I can I can live with this extra length here. I can figure out how to route it. So I'm not gonna complain. I'm actually quite pleased with the quality of their lines. Especially these little parts here that have the part number. 672047, now you know. Also, my 50 cent can of flat gray spray paint came out gloss. There's a reason that this can was 50 cents. That's fine, it looks kinda nice. It probably won't last though with the heat. Well, you could say that again, especially with the first start, which we are just minutes away. These headers, don't buy them, I'll tell you why. I'm a little hesitant to record whenever I do something that's uh, questionable or may not succeed. In this case, it was grinding down that dowel pin right there underneath our middle intake uh, exhaust bolt. And this dowel pin, like its brethren here on either side, are painfully installed in the sense that they just aren't coming out 
I tried vice grips, nope. I tried uh, bolt extractors, no. And uh, thankfully it didn't strip out the bolt extractors, it just ground it down. And so I went, oh, okay, this is kind of soft metal, maybe I could just drill into it. So I took drill bits of varying sizes, hollowed it out, and then as I found out I was going further than the surface of the manifold itself, I was like, no, 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 let me, I don't want to go too far in case I, you know, breach the head or get into some water jacket out there. Who knows exactly how deep the metal goes in there, so I didn't want to risk that. I drilled it out as best as I could and then took an angle grinder and just chopped down the rest of it to make it level. Anyway, fuel injected heads are the only ones with this issue because they have different manifolds, exhaust manifolds. The flanges are thicker as well, so I guess that's Volvo's way of not letting you mix and match. Okay, it looks like it's a straight shot across the runners, so if I can confirm, then I don't need to do any more grinding because there is a little lip. This little lip right here is below that. I'll just take a chisel to this, knock off those little burrs. Metal shavings were probably the biggest inconvenience when it came to uh, getting them on your clothes and things. I, I put down one of those really big nappy towels and it's now in the trash because it did its job. It lived a good life. Let's finally get this thing put on. Stop fighting me, Bruce. I know you just want to have a B18 and you want to have everything associated with that, but we're trying to upgrade you and have a little bit of fun. So please don't fight me anymore. I'm getting tired. Alexa, resume music. Yeah, that's fitting. I drank too much black coffee. I thought I told you not to buy this crappy manifold, but it was so cheap on VP's website. Shame on me. Hey, David, just stick with OE. Made all of that up in one take, for real. The flange on the headers, okay, so yeah, it's aftermarket. There's no substitute for an original yada yada, but they're designed for this style. Yet, when I put the washers on, they don't make contact with the intake manifold. They only make contact with the exhaust. Ugh, the exhaust manifold needs shims to meet the distance on the intake. Now, that kinda sucks. Cause that means I gotta go cut some washers now and do the same old, same old. Uh, three hour time lapse that was. It's about 3.30 in the morning. This shaft, uh, throttle linkage, was actually one inch too short. And what that was doing was it was keeping the carburetors from opening up full throttle one full inch of throttle travel, which actually ends up being quite a bit. Could have been that I could only achieve half throttle if I didn't realize that this was too short. And I went through and made adjustments and everything. I adjusted the linkage here that spans the two. I'm about to call it a night. In the morning, I would like to do all the coolant line plumbing back here. I'm now rebuilding the proportioning valve that goes at the end of the rear brake line, just above the rear axle bolted to the body of the car. This proportioning valve has a omnidirectional O-ring with a very slight taper. And the Chilton's, the Haynes manual does show that in a cutaway sectional detail, but do be aware. And the best way to get that on actually for me was to soak it in warm to hot water so that I could have that ready to go and it would stretch over the uh, surface that it needs to to snap into place. That O-ring was the biggest problem. If you rip it though, you'll have to buy a new kit and that's no fun. You can see the extra space that I have here for the brake line. It's no problem. That's better. All right, Sari is here to help me with the first start. Gonna need a little more enthusiasm from you there. Uh, we put in brake fluid, which is not necessary for the first start. There is some gasoline in the back. Uh, first gas in a new tank, oil's in, slight coolant leak from the water pump where it seals to the head, and uh, it stopped dripping after maybe two or three glasses worth of coolant, and uh, it's ready to go. We're going to crank and crank, get some oil pressure in, and then eventually gasoline will come, and with that hopefully some spark too. Some of the connections are tentative, like the PCV valve. We're going to hold back judgment because I have to be out of here in 48 hours. This is my label for the keys. Like, that's that's how bad it's getting. <laughs> well, we've got lights on at the dash, and let's crank. Not at all nervous. All right. Uh, it's not screwed down, though.
It's going to be worth mentioning there is no exhaust connected past the downpipe, so we're going to have a really good time. And uh, let's just do this to check for spark. Okay. All right. Let's see, no spark. I'm going to check for power at the coil first. Yeah. Oh, we have spark. Lots of clear tubing is going to keep you from getting gas in your mouth, but I want to get the old gas out and onto the floor right here where it's safe. It's gonna take a minute for these carbies to fill up with gas, but we do have spark because I was dumb and didn't check my connections. Alrighty, Bruce, first start. Fingers crossed. Staying far away. Where's that fire extinguisher? Just crank forever. I wanna change over the spark plug tester because it's still attached. All right, and let me move these floats up and down a few times to see if we get gas. The way the SU carburetors function is that the gas comes up through the bottom where you see the red jets, and then the no needle closes the jet. It's not like traditional cars where pushing the throttle is actually going to spray gasoline with like an accelerator pump. So you want to lift and check for fuel out of the jets. Maybe not enough. All right, I kind of want to eat now and then we can just get back to it. Sari, start. Sari, start this engine. So we can bleed the brakes and go for a ride. Are you... Chokes are open. All right, still no gas. I know, it's just taking a while for gas to get up there. Yeah. All right, uh, let's do it one more time and then I will check the fuel bowls and see if there's anything in there. She did cough it up. Some gas came out. means we had a good time. Mm, that's not the right thing to say. <laughs> uh, Sarah, what time is it? It is 12.40. Oh, that's not so bad. 0041. We're gonna go for a drive, borrow the battery from Jen, and it's so weird when you're looking through the headlight hole and staring at the suspension, but that's the 60s for you. There are no headlights on the car, 
but I'm gonna magnet and uh, some LEDs. It'll be good, if no one's out, we'll get by. <laughs> but the exhaust is on. The uh, downpipe, which comes with the Simmons kit. Oh boy, I don't feel good about this, but this is the crime scene. That had to be sleeved into the thing. And you know what, I loosened the jack just enough that it started and then I think it just stopped. Let's go down. The wood started cracking, I got nervous so I dropped it. Oh, she dropped that real look at that. You wanna see what happened? Guess all those holes drilled in the middle of it finally gave out. Cool, because that's the last time you're supposed to be up in the air for a while, so let's get out of here. Well, let's do it. Oh, that sounds much quieter. Much nicer. Let's get it out of here. Huh. That was not normal. Give it another start and then just let it idle and warm up and... Almost. Okay, hold on. It's two in the morning and uh, we find out that we had no spark again. Also, we're barely idling, so let's see what happens. Hey. First time moving under our own power, let's go. Oh, that clutch was real funny. Oh, yeah. But you know what? Sometimes you just gotta feel a little drive, break it in. No, nobody says Brakes no. feel nice. Nobody says go in dry and break it in. <laughs> Smoke? Cool. Totally not safe, but alright. I don't think the videos are gonna be good for anything. Yeah, I'm sorry. I did the alignment myself. <laughs> sure, it's enough proof that the car is moving. <laughs> that was um, that was a historic moment. <laughs> Didn't feel like it. It just felt like a little ridiculous. A lot of ridiculous. Entirely ridiculous. That. But you know what? The girls are out and they're they're ready to play. Mm, mm, no, not at not at three. Let's see what survived. Our headers are back to flat black. It's a good satin finish. Um, it didn't overheat though. That was cool, that was really cool. We stopped all of our gas leaks. Yes. Slowly but surely. And all the paint on this side of the headers is coming off, which is cool. Because that's what we want. Get it. Right there, see that? So maybe that's all the smoke we saw? Yeah. I'm hoping. All right, I'm gonna put the cars in the garage, so let's take advantage of the time that you're still here. Yeah, we need. Way needs an adjustment on these carbies for sure. Good night. See you guys in California. with me, buddy, just with me, buddy, don't let her get the best of me, buddy, don't ever let me start feeling lonely.